Hey, what's up YouTube? I've got a lot of requests on how I did my final title sequence in my last video that I posted, so I'm going to do a tutorial on how exactly I did that. Um, first thing I did is I brought in the footage that I wanted to use and from the actual final render that I did. Um, what I like to do is just scroll through it, see exactly where I'm looking to freeze frame it at, which I like this frame. This is my f and what I do from there is I hit the B to bring in my the works the workspace right here. If I hit B that'll bring it right to my um, my playhead. And then I hit N. And what that does is it brings it down to a single frame. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go into Composition, Add to Render Queue. From there I'm going to go into the Settings, go to JPEG Sequence. This is going to export just that single frame into one single JPEG. That way I can pull it into Photoshop and edit it from there. Make sure I go in here, make sure I'm at the larger files so I have a nice high quality JPEG. Hit OK and I'll choose a location. I've already had already have an export of it. So once I do that, I'd hit save and then render and from there it will render it out. So now I go down into Photoshop. I will make a new project, go into presets, film and video. I have HDV 1080 um this I have 1440 by 1080 with a pixel aspect ratio of 1.33 because that's what my video camera that I use shoots at. I click OK. What I'll do is I'll go to place and then bring in the photo that I want to use. Now when you see it it's going to look somewhat squished because you're seeing it without the aspect ratio. So what I do just to correct that is is hold down alt while I drag and that way it'll stay proportional and there you go it looks that'll look just about right I hit enter and it places it in what I like to do from here is go and rasterize the layer and then make a couple copies of the layer that way if I mess up or anything then I can just go and recopy that one so from here I like to take the top layer, go into image adjustment, and desaturate it. That way it gets all it gets rid of all the color. I like the black and white effect for what I'm going for. I go into image adjustment levels. And this is where you can really just play around. Each each photo or each still image that you use is going to be a little different. Um, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus mainly on the background, not not the specific people you know the the shooter or the guy getting shot I'm just gonna get something that looks pretty good not worrying that he's getting blown out and you really can't see him because what I'm gonna do is make another layer so right there looks pretty good to me so I'll hit OK and now I will take the layer directly beneath it I'll turn off the eyeball on the first layer and now I will again go to adjustment, desaturate, and then in the filters, I'll go artistic cutout. Now, this is where you can kind of play around again and get it to the way that you want it. And all right, from here, you'll I just hit OK. Looks good to me right now. And now, what I'll do is I'll turn the eyeball back on on the first layer, and I'll select the first layer go to the erase tool and I'll zoom in a bit on my guy here and then I use the brackets right next to the P on your keyboard and that'll make my my thing a little smaller and 70 on opacity is pretty good so now I can go in and really just start tracing him out that way it kind of highlights him a little bit more. From here I can make my 
make my point a little bit bigger so I can kind of get in here and clean this up a bit. And also a good thing to do is once I once I've kind of deleted all that stuff out, I'm going to click the second layer here, go down into image adjustments and play with the curves just a little bit here. I'm just going to give it a a little bit more contrasty of a feel to it. That way it blends it just a little bit better. I'll bring my darks down and and that's pretty much the gist of what I'm going to do in Photoshop. So now I'm going to go file save as JPEG and we will name this Photo Retouch and save it out. And again I like to make sure that the JPEG quality is as high as it can be. Click OK and let's go back up to After Effects where I can now import the file that I just made back into After Effects All right, and Photo Retouch. Okay so now I'm back in the composition where I'm going to make the freeze frame and lay in that photo. So what I'm going to first do is I want it to play up to that one point. So I'm going to hit Command D and that's going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to use Option N bracket to to tell it where it's going to where I want that to stop. And I'm going to right click go into time and hit freeze frame. That way it's going to it's going to play everything right up to this point and then freeze frame it. And now I'm going to pull in the photo retouch photo and lay it on top. I'll bring that so it lines it up right with the freeze frame and from there I can kind of drag this out because again the it's not showing it with the um, Photoshop will not doesn't render it with the, the actual uh, pixel aspect ratio so you have to just do that to do an easy color correct now what you'll notice if you look at the original video that I did is that there's a transition from the freeze frame to this and the way I did that was I made a new solid make sure it's comp size doesn't matter really what color it is and then I'm gonna go over here and I've already typed in turbulent I'm gonna get turbulent noise in this effect and I'll drop it on top of there now what I want to do is increase the contrast I want it extremely contrasty because what I'm trying to do is make a matte where it goes right from black to white but with a little bit of um, you know just a little bit of grays and things moving around so what I'll do is I'll just I'll type in 450. Also, I'm going to go into the transform drop down and bring the scale up to about 300. That way, we'll bring this up just like so. And the evolution now an easy way to make this animate is by alt clicking the stopwatch here. That's going to bring up my expressions. I'm just going to type in a simple expression: time times. 1000 and that way I'll get a nice little things will start moving around and it kind of makes it a little bit more lively from here I'm gonna go up to the brightness click this stopwatch and right from here I want it to be completely black so I'm gonna bring this down all the way until I can't see any white I'm right about there I want this to be about two seconds long to a minute to a second and a half. Um, so I'll do it right about here. And I'll bring the brightness up until it's completely white. Just like so. And then I'll select both and hit F9 so I get a nice easy easing going so it's not just completely linear. So now you have a black black mat where it just slowly transitions with a little liveliness to white. And that's exactly what we're looking for. 
So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the still image from right here, and I'm going to I'm going to go up into Layer Precompose, and I will move all attributes from here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to click on my toggle switches mode, and then go into the track mat, and I'm going to choose Luma Mat white solid because we had to make sure that this white solid was above this. So now what we'll see is that it'll you'll see the transition go from you know slowly move from you know a color to the black and white image that we made in Photoshop. You know from that that's the gist. Now we can kind of kind of stylize it a little bit more, make it a little bit better looking. I'll add a camera. Do a 35 millimeter preset will work for this. <clears throat> Make sure that everything that I have in here is 3D. And what I'll do is I will just bring down the transformation options. I will click position interest of point. Uh, point of interest and over the five seconds is how long each one of my pieces were so what I'll do is I'll hit C to bring up my camera options and I'll just do a simple zoom in give it a moment there we go and then bring it over so it's a little better in, in the box so now Right here, I'll want to do a keyframe easy ease out. That way, when it goes, you'll get. And I'll bring this down to half resolution. So now, this, will, as it goes in, we'll start zooming in. And from there, what I like to do is I like to. I went into this pre comp. And this is where it starts, so I'm going to go into my project panel. I've already imported some blood hits from the Action Essentials 2. And I'll just drag them out. Make sure that they're at the playhead. I'll hit S to bring up the scale. And I'll bring it down to a much more uh, manageable size. In my video, you'll see that I, I really dramatized this, this section. I wanted it to be, you know, I wanted the blood to be larger than what it would be and I wanted it to just be extremely dramatic. Um, from here what I like to do is uh, make sure my frame blending is on by clicking this. I double click it and I go into the right click, go to time, enable time for mapping. And from here I just take this stopwatch, I mean this, uh, this keyframe and drag it out to the end and this again you can play with a lot and that'll give you like a nice dramatic blood splat and there you have it you know from there I would go in and start adding in some titles and you know as you can see that that part of it was pretty simple. I just animated the uh, text in with, um, you know, with a, a solid going across the, the part right here with the names coming across. And uh, all in all, this is a pretty cool technique that, uh, that I came up with here. And I hope uh, all of you enjoy it. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them, and I will be more than happy to answer them. Also, uh, if you haven't had a chance, please check out the last video that I posted. Um, it was featured by Freddie, Freddie Wong, if you don't know who he is. And uh, if you get a chance, subscribe. Uh, I do need some more subscribers, and you know that'll help me start coming out with some more videos for you guys. Um, stay tuned, because I will be doing more tutorials. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.